In the last video, I showed you a way of modifying a projector for our volumetric display. Now we need a moving surface to project onto. For my first experiments, I use these helix-shaped rotating objects. It's easy to start with and can be used to get a first impression of the technology. However, I realize that the spinning surface has a number of disadvantages. There are distortions caused by projecting onto a tilted surface. The ideal method would be to project onto a plane that moves up and down. But how to create a fast vertical motion? My inspiration came from looking at my speakers while listening to music. Voice coils. Voice coils are able to produce fast linear movements and are relatively cheap. So I ended up converting some old speakers into cheap linear voice actuators. Here is the result, a simple voice coil actuator made from an old speaker. When a periodic signal such as a sine wave is passed through an amplifier, it moves up and down and this moves our projection screen. In early versions I mounted the projection surface directly on the speakers. This is possible, but has some drawbacks, mainly because the typical maximum linear displacement is only a few millimeters but also because it somehow limits the configuration to a front projection unit. But what I wanted is a rear projection unit. So I had to find a way to amplify the oscillation and at the same time precisely control the movement of the surface. I decided to take on a challenge and try using compliant mechanisms for the first time. Compliant mechanisms are flexible structures that transmit an input displacement to another point through elastic body deformation. The beauty of these structures is that they are easy to 3D print. They are light and do not require mechanical parts such as springs, etc. Unfortunately, I'm completely new to this field of mechanics, so I spent a lot of time experimenting and found the final design through a long trial and error approach. But eventually, by adjusting the stiffness of the rigid bodies and the flexible parts, I found the right balance for this system to work in the desired frequency range. By integrating a compliant and parallel mechanism, the motion of the projection surface is guided by the mechanical constraints of the parallel structure to move only vertically. In early versions, I used standard 3D printing materials such as PLA or PTEG for my experiments. But soon I realized that such materials are not ideal. They are too stiff and my structure always broke after a while in use. So is there a material that we can print that can resist the necessary elastic deformations for a long time? Yes, there is. Polypropylene. Polypropylene is an ideal material for this purpose because it can be deformed without breaking and is very flexible. It is tough, light and has a high fatigue resistance. It fully retains its shape after bending. However, it is more difficult to print, which is why it is not widely used in 3D printing. Polypropylene often warps and has a poor layer adhesion. So after reading about it, I expected a lot of problems, but to my surprise, the printing went very well. The main problem is often bad adhesion, but there's a simple trick. Polypropylene loves to stick to itself, and most packing tape is made of polypropylene. So I used such a clear tape on the print pad and had no problems at all. The other important aspect is the print speed. I set the default profile to print very slow. The downside is of course that it takes a long time, but fortunately the parts are not very big. The print time was about 3 hours, which was fine for me.
The results are excellent. The structures amplify the vibrations perfectly without breaking. And I can even stretch the projection volume up to 15 to 20 millimeters without the risk of damage. Now we have a projector and a moving surface. So next we need to get the coils to move exactly in sync with the projector. Here is what the circuit needs to do. Analyze the sync signal from the projector, drive the coils and control the LCD shutter. To synchronize with the projector we need to know exactly when a new frame sequence will start. Remember the wires we soldiered to our wheel sensor earlier? Now it's time to use them. They will set our master timing reference for the entire circuit. Looking at the waveform, it is clear that we need to do some signal conditioning first. The sensor only provides tiny analog pulses that need to be amplified and then used as input to a trigger stage before they can reach our Arduino interrupt input. Here is the circuit I designed for this. To drive the coils, I use a simple wavetable player that outputs a sine wave. The wavetable starts exactly on every other color wheel pulse and is synchronized to the projector at a defined frequency. The PWM output is then low-pass filtered and passed on to an operational amplifier to adjust the level. Positive DC offset is removed, causing it to oscillate around ground level. After that, the signal is sent to an external power amplifier. As we learned earlier, we need to be able to block out some unwanted frames from the projector stream using an LCD shutter. The required signal for the shutter alternates from high to low in opposite states. To replicate this required control signal, a bridge circuit is needed. I am using the well-known L293, which is a very common device for motor control, but it will do the exact same job. After extensive testing on a breadboard, all functions were consolidated onto a single board.
Okay, now it's time to test our circuit. Unfortunately, nothing happens. Although the schematic is quite simple, of course, I managed to make a silly mistake. Fortunately, it was easy to fix, thanks to the old-fashioned through-hole components I was using. Good, this is the signal we want to see. Next up is the wave output. It does work. And we can do the level adjustments with the parts. Finally to the shutter control. Yeah, looks good too. Excellent, now we have the electronics working. Several software applications had to be created for this project. For example, the Arduino script that outputs the wave and controls the shutter. I will not explain it in detail here, please see my article for details. Instead, let me briefly touch on a few other tools. To create an appropriate input stream, we must first understand how the subframes end up on the moving surface. Each of the 12 frames is displayed at a defined vertical position on the moving plane of the projection. Since the plane moves up and down, the position of each frame has no direct relationship. Instead, they appear somehow mixed up. It is mainly affected by the phase of the sine wave. So to display correct objects, we need to find out the mapping of each layer. To do this, I have created a calibration tool that displays a test pattern of 12 numbered stripes that can be rearranged. Each stripe represents one frame, and if all stripes are ordered sequentially, then we have found a valid configuration for a particular phase. This calibration is only required once, and the final configuration is then saved to a file. To convert objects for this machine, we need to slice models into 12 layers and assign them to frames according to their vertical position. I've written a tool for Windows that reads common 3D file formats like STL, OBJ, etc. It is basically a simple slicer. So now we can download this 3D object from an online database, import it, and then adjust the position and orientation. The tool will then slice the object and generate the corresponding monochrome images. Then it reads the layer configuration file that we have created in the calibration process earlier and is now able to correctly assign all layers. All images are recolored in pure RGB to match the correct configuration, merged and then saved in final bitmaps that look like this. Finally, to display our object, the player application reads these bitmaps generated by the slicer tool and displays them in GPU-generated VSync output. The player is designed to run on the built-in single-board computer Latte Panda. Alternatively, a connected PC can also be used. The application is designed to read a number of subdirectories that can contain either a single static object or a series of bitmaps for animations.
Thank you.